Now this is a cool old truck. This is a Survivor 1954 Ford F100. I call it a Survivor because it is all original, essentially. It is... It has had one repaint, but uh, other than that, it's pretty much the original running gear, the original suspension, maybe even the original brakes. I don't know. But uh, it's a pretty cool old truck. you got to love these fat fender Fords. This one's a 1954, if I remember right. And uh, it's a pretty cool, cool old truck. It is uh, still running under its original inline six and three on the tree propulsion system. And uh, it's pretty cool. You guys want to see inside? It's pretty unique. Got an old blanket for a seat cover. These are pretty cool. It's got the three pedals and a shifter up top. Back and up is reverse. Down is first, but it's not synchronized, so you have to come to a complete stop when you uh, put it in the first gear. Basically, you take off in first gear. Forward and up is second. Third is forward and down. If you're driving, you're slowing down to a stop, you're rolling stop, you'll go down into second, and then you'll accelerate out if you don't have to come to a complete stop. If you come to a complete stop, bring it up, down, and that would be first gear. So reverse, first, second, third. These old Fords are kind of unique. You turn the key on, and you press the button to fire it up. This one's still got the cowl vent air conditioner on it, which is awesome. A little air flow through here while you're driving down the road. Life has worked better than most. pressure. Battery's charging. Odometer shows 44,000 miles on this thing and I probably would say that that's original miles. This is a great old survivor, man. This would be an ideal candidate for a modern drivetrain upgrade. But the owner drives it just the way it is. He tootles around Orient a while. He actually drove it here. We're going to put it up on the alignment rack and uh, do a quick alignment and let them know if it needs anything else, which it probably needs king pins and or high rod ends if it's never done. The steering gear definitely needs to be rebuilt. You can see how much free play is in the steering gear. So, let's get to work. Here's some of that original Ford Blue, the least egg blue truck. All right, we're up on all four corners. Got my heads hung. This truck's still running the original wheels with inner tubes. 
That's unique. So I'm not too far out. I actually made some adjustments to this yesterday. Fuel tank in the cab, the way they did it back in the 50s and 60s. In the 70s, the GM put the tank, what, under the driver's side seat outside the frame rail. So when they got, had side impacts, the trucks went kaboom. It was a lot less of a deal than it was made out to be, but they did have to put some safety uh, shields onto the trucks for extra protection. Same thing happened to the Pinto with rear end collisions, but the uh, C, CK trucks from the 70s square bodies had, had problems with uh, side impact fuel cell ruptures. There's really not a lot to align on this truck. The rear axle's on leaf springs, the front beam axle is on leaf springs. The camber is not adjustable unless you're willing to warm up the beam axle and make adjustments. I'm gonna jack this up because I'm pretty sure this thing has uh, king pins and bushings that need to be replaced. Um, my, my adjustments move around quite a bit and uh, it makes it do funny things. I'll show you. So it definitely needs kingpins and bushings. I stand corrected. The fuel tank is under the cab, outside of the frame rail, much like the 70s CK trucks. So cool old Survivor, uh, you know, back in the Back in the 50s, you know, speed limits were, what, like 35, 40 mile an hour? Probably unpaved roads. This truck did most of its traveling at 35 mile an hour. So I wouldn't necessarily take this thing out on the freeway. Um, in today's roads, it doesn't have the brakes, nor does it have the top gear for it. This thing's geared for pulling tree stumps and hauling hay. Um, I know my 41 Ford is a three on the tree, flathead geared to the moon and at 50 mile an hour that thing just seems like it's ready to sh shoot the rods out the sides of the block because it's just revving so fast um but that's the way the roads were back then you know compared to today's roads that's why we that's why we do overdrive transmission swaps and better rear gears and better brakes on these old cars to make them usable in on today's roads um this is a cool survivor for running around driving around town, going to the ice cream store and whatnot. Uh, and that's exactly what I would do this thing. I wouldn't probably do anything to this truck if I lived in Orient. It's a small town, got lots of cool stuff to do, drive around, have fun with it. Or, you know, small block Ford, five speed, disc brakes, front disc brakes, better rear end, Mustang two front suspension. It's a rabbit hole. This would be a good truck to do it on though. So we're starting with uh, over a degree and a half toe in and I'm actually going to, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to set the toe and try and make it as good as I can. It looks like you just replaced the outer tie rod end so that's why it's here. It'll just make it drivable until he gets the kingpins done and then it can have a much more proper alignment done. That will actually hold and be uh, a viable repair. So let's do that real quick. That'll do, donkey.
got a clear foot bowl on it. That's neat. That's a very cool piece. I don't know that I've ever seen one of those in person. Well, this is a cool old truck. I got to admit, I could uh, I could see myself driving this thing around all over the place. Um, I would probably wear this thing out. Uh, back to the modifications on this truck. I don't know. It drives well enough that I would probably do period correct modifications to the existing drivetrain. So I would do a little different gearing in the rear to make it a little more freeway friendly for today's roads. I would put disc brakes on the front, update the master cylinder to a dual stage, uh, mas a dual master cylinder so that it's a little safer. And I would probably do period engine modifications like a uh, split manifold and multi-carb setup on the, the existing inline six. Um, the, the body looks great just the way it is. I honestly wouldn't do anything to it. I'd drive it just the way it is. Um, it looks like he's doing some little things. He replaced the tailgate hinges and a couple pieces here and a couple pieces there. The glass float bowl's super cool. Um, I didn't see that until just now. I didn't see it the first time I looked at it. Um, that's a pretty cool piece. Not sure how well those hold up, but I mean it's a glass piece with a metal surround, so it probably works just fine. Obviously it does because it's on here working just fine. At any rate, that's our uh, our customer from Orient, Ohio. It's about 23, 24 miles away from here. He brought this thing in for us to do a quick alignment on it after putting some tie rod ends on it and to make it drivable. We gave him a few things to uh, keep his eyes on and tend to as he sees fit. In the meantime, he's going to go enjoy his truck. And uh, total respect, I would I would drive the wheels off this thing. Well, at any rate, thanks for coming along with us for the ride. You guys have a great day. We'll see you soon.